it's already done. Come on, tell somebody it's already done. Why don't you get up and encourage somebody and say it's already done? It's already done. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. We give your name the praise of the Lord and the honor. Because it is already done. Amen. the program. Say this. I know that you might be dealing with a lot of things, 
And a lot of adversities probably happen during the week. But I come to worship God. Amen. And the word worship, the word worship means to take everything that you're facing, the problems, take them out your mind and focus on the problem solving. I hope you didn't come here to be entertained. Because I want to let you know, you're not the audience. God is the audience. I'm going to testify right now. Tell me I got to pray. I, I got to get it out. <laughs> Last Thursday, my air condition unit, boom! Blue eye. I've been in a hot house about for two weeks. And I started thinking about the sermon that I preached. And I asked, the Spirit asked me. Because I said to myself, I'm not going to choir rehearsal tonight. I'm going to stay at home. I'm mad, I'm frustrated, and I'm upset. And the Spirit simply said to me, You remember the question you asked? Are you a carrot or are you an egg? When the heat is on, do you get hard or you get soft? And I have to tell you right now, if you focus on God and put your thought, your problems, and you cast it on Him, it's going to be all right, y'all. Listen, I'm sure I had a lot of show this up, how to deal with it. He said, go back to old school. I raised my windows up. The breeze started coming through and the fan was blowing. Tell me my girl don't make the way. Hey! Let's have a trip, y'all. Forget about your care and your troubles. I know when you get through shouting, you know, I gotta go back and face the same way. But when you go home and you face it, shout again. Yeah, look, look, look. You should have called a sussel over there. Nobody but she Sarah Hustle. She knows what we're talking about. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap and say? I was singing, you gotta, I gotta praise in my heart. I just gotta shout and tell somebody about the goodness of God. God's been good to everybody. Because we're here on today. We're, we're now up to our mission and education offering. If you have a Prayer request, put it in the basket. Thank <laughs> you. 
give back to you the portions that you have given to us. Lord, we pray that this gift be used for the ongoing of your kingdom here on earth. Bless those who gave and those who had the desire to give. In Jesus' name, bless the Lord. Stand where you are, come to the altar. Thank God for prayer. Prayer is dialogue with God. You talking to Him. that he never tears a deaf ear to his children. He hears us when we call. He hears our cry. God knows what we go through. He experienced the same pain that we experienced. He walked the same dusty roads that we walked. We serve a God who wants us bring all our concerns and all our problems and all our troubles to Him. We serve a God who wants what's best for us. He will always lead us and guide us in the right direction. If you just trust Him with all of your heart, stand on His promises that He'll do what He said He did. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. A God who is able to heal us. Let us pray. Love, we come thankfully for giving us another day. Lord, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to praise and worship your holy and righteous name. Lord, we thank you for being a God who looked past our faults and seen our needs. And then, Lord, we want to thank you for supplying our needs. You have given us food, shelter. Lord, you protect us and you kept us in our right mind. Lord, we thank you for your healing power. We thank you, oh God, for the power of prayer and the change that's going to come through prayer. Lord, because it's through prayer we are healed. It's through prayer our sins are forgiven. It's through prayer we are made whole again. It's through prayer our needs are met. Lord, it's through prayer that we can weather the storms in our lives. Lord, we thank you for giving us prayer. We thank you, O oh God, for your son Jesus, who died upon the cross so that we can have life and have it more abundant. And Lord, we want to thank you for those who have submission for prayer this morning. Jean Madison, Elizabeth Powers, the Young family, the Bingham family, the Hudson family, the Nash family, Brianna Wright and the Wright family, the entire Young family, Mary Pope, Annie Crone, Lord, you know what they stand in the need of. 
Lord, you know their wants, you know their needs, you know their desires. Lord, we just ask that you bless right now in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we know that there's healing power in your hand. There's delivering power in your hand. Lord, whatever we're faced with on this morning, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, Lord, we just lay it at your feet. Lord, because we know that you are able to work it out. So, Lord, we ask that you work a miracle in the lives of your people right now. Work your power right now, oh God, in the lives of your people. Let your spirit rain down on them right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless St. Mark. Lord, continue to bring us all together on one accord. Lord, help us to stand on your promises. Help us, oh God, to trust in you. Lord, lead us and guide us in the way that you want us to go. And Lord, we pray for the man who's going to bring your word on today. Lord, give him a word from on high. A word that will cause someone to come right. What must I do to be saved? And Lord, we just thank you right now. Thank you for allowing us to be in this presence this morning. We thank you for this service, oh God. We thank you for allowing us to worship you and praise you, oh God. Lord, we just thank you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. We thank you for what you're doing and what you yet to do in our lives. And we thank you for the things you have already done. The songwriter said, if you never do nothing else, Lord, you already done enough. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. We magnify you right now. We glorify you right now. Let us shout glory. Hallelujah. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let us all say, Amen. 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 Amen.
It said every knee yeah. shall bow. Yeah. And every tongue shall confess. You don't have a choice when that time comes. So it is written, so it shall be done. This is the time in our service when we would like to acknowledge all visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please stand, share with us your name, and where you're from. Amen. 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 Starting down to my right. St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church is here for you. It is not just a church, it is a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the Lord to celebrate Jesus as King. We are a praying church with a praying pastor. May God richly bless you and keep you, and we hope to see you all here. Amen. I'd like to share the following announcements with you. July is Juvenile Arthritis Awareness Month. The Oasis Ministry and the North Texas Food Bank will distribute food items on Thursdays. July 6th and July 20th from 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. The St. Mark Leadership Summit will be Saturday, July 8th, 2017 from 9 o'clock a.m. to noon in the Educational Center. The facilitator will be Dr. Johnny R. Bradley, Senior Pastor of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church and President of Dallas Baptist Theological Institute. The summit focus will be effective communication. The Usher Board will host their first fundraiser Saturday, July 8th at noon. This is following the Leadership Summit. Please come out and join them in eating some Texas-style barbecue. The Galilee Griggs Memorial District Association of Baptist Church's 88th Annual Session, 88th Congress of Christian Education, and 84th Youth Conference will be Sunday, July 9th through Thursday, July 13th at Cornerstone Baptist Church, 5415 Matlock, Arlington, Texas, moderator, with Dwight Kizzy is host pastor. The theme is envisioning the future through commitment and Christian fellowship. Jeremiah 29 and 11 and 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Attention parents, if your child plans to attend the youth conference, please see Brother Lawrence. The men's ministry will meet on Monday, July the 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. The women's ministry will also meet on Monday, July the 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. There will be a meeting of all regular Sunday school teachers on Saturday, July 15, 2017, from 9 to 10 a.m. Please make plans to be in attendance. That's from Brother Jerry McDonald. The Women's Chorus will have rehearsals Tuesday, July 18, and July 25th at 7 o'clock p.m. in preparation of Fifth Sunday. All women are welcome and encouraged to join us. Thank you in advance, Sister Seth Deborah Morgan and Sister Linda Gatson. The Oasis Ministry presents their second annual luncheon Thursday, July 27, 2017, from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. The program will be in the sanctuary and lunch will be served in the Educational Center. The Men's Ministry will again host the annual Community Back to School Bash. It will be on Sunday, August 6th for students of St. Mark and on Saturday, August 12th for the community. We are now accepting school supplies and or monetary donations. 
which can be given to any member of the men's ministry. There will be donation containers placed in the rear of the sanctuary and in the lobby of the education center for contributions, contributions by second Sunday in July. If you need a list of items that are needed, please see school supplies, wish list that will also be in the lobbies of the education center or sanctuary by Sunday, July 2nd. Second. second Sunday, July 2nd. And that's from Deacon Willie Gates, President. Amen. Today, the pastor's aid will be offering food items for a moderate donation. Today, the pastor's aid will be offering food items for a moderate donation. This is to benefit our one and only Lorenzo Rock Turner to get him closer to his goal for his needed surgery. This will be in the back of the church after morning worship. Thanks in advance for your help and to God be the glory for your support. Sister Sandra Williams, President. Amen. Food for thought. Freedom still rings. Such rich blessings without number still flow throughout this land. We only need to look around to see God's gracious hand. We still have freedom to worship openly without fear and to preach and teach God's message in places far and near. Yes, freedom still rings compared to third world countries, friends. This land is still the best, though many changes are needed. We are still richly blessed. We the people still have a voice. United, let us stand and make a difference in this world. Join us as one hand in hand while freedom still rings. Oh, let us thank the Lord our God for preserving our land. Only by his mercy and grace does America still stand. And thanks to all who sacrificed to keep us safe and free. To keep <coughs> oh to keep us safe and free. Old glory is still waving high for all the world to see. Freedom still brings. May everyone be blessed and have a blessed week. and we ask that you would be in prayer for those who are on vacation and those who are just out today. To do that, a family that prays together, stays together. So let us not forget that. And also, let's be in prayer for uh, Brooke Anson, who has gone through another shoulder replacement. Amen. 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 Let's pray for you. The Lord will give him peace of mind and at the same time be delivery back to the church. Amen. Those of you who are visiting with us here today, we thank you, praise God, for your presence for being here with us today. And uh, our guest speaker this morning seems as though his wife got the word out. <laughs> I, I say that all in fun. But it's so good to have him become the of the Spirit today. Now, I must give kudos to the kitchen help today. They had sirloin steak. And you didn't have to even have stove off tea to eat it. <laughs> it was tender as it can be. And for those of you who had breakfast this morning, you can attest to the fact. It was mm, good. Amen. See what you all miss when you don't come to Sunday school? Uh, what is that? A sumptuous breakfast, eggs, they rise all kinds of fruit and juices. Now that's every Sunday morning. That's just not one Sunday. That's every Sunday morning. And I told Brother Anglin, you know, he and Sister Anglin wake up early in the morning, come over and get the breakfast going, sure. <laughs> but nevertheless, we thank the kitchen crew for that. And uh, we'd like to welcome back to our choir. Yeah. She has matriculated, done well, got her second degree, and now she's ready to serve the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> 
let us not forget the leadership conference coming up on next Saturday morning here in the educational building. Please be here, St. Mark. It's for your benefit. Please show up and let's let's have a good time studying the Word of God and being aware of the new methodology of presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Oasis Ministry will be having their events this month. I'm going to ask Sister Madison to stand up and tell us about it now. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, on the far uh, Thursday of this month, I believe it's July the 27th, uh, we will be celebrating our second annual fellowship luncheon. Uh, and uh, it will also be a service uh, the first part of the morning. So I just want to air invite everyone who can and will. We know it's a Thursday. But we have oh, many churches that come in. I think we had almost 100 people here on last year. So this is an opportunity for us as Oasis members of every congregation uh, to come together and praise the Lord and then have a fellowship with us. You are invited. Amen. Thank you, baby. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's my wife. So. Uh, Galilee Griggs will be convening next week for the annual conference and convention and we're going to ask that St. Mark would be an active participant in our district and I'm looking to see you all being there. Also, please help support the financial effort for Brother Rock. Stand up. Barack right was born into this fellowship yes, years ago, and he has been a very faithful yes, member of this congregation his entire life. And he is needing a kidney. So let's let's do this today. Let's get what it takes, and uh, let's help him get the kidney that the Lord is going to bless him with. Amen. And I would appreciate you helping this guy. Yeah. Uh, Brother Lou will be going through his catechizing this week, which is Tuesday, please. Is that right, Brother Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. And then the third Sunday will be his ordination. And we want you all to really have support, Brother Blue. Amen. Brother Blue Amen. has been a diamond in the rough, and we're trying to polish him up for the Lord Amen. so that the Lord can use him. And the brightness of his glitter, which is his service, can be helpful and beneficial to our church. And I'm proud to have him to come and join the deacon staff. Amen. Pray for our church. Amen. 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 Pray for our church. Let's 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 come together in the fellowship and in the Christian love that binds our hearts together, so that we can be more effective internally as we prepare to do external ministry. You know, if you're not together on the inside of the house, it'll be known on the outside of the house. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us come together and unite. God has a great work that needs to be done in this church internally. And if you never come to know one another through the spiritual realm of life and only knowing each other in the physical mindset, We'll never know the love of God and what God can do with us. We're his army, and we need to be equipped to do the work that he has called us to do. So let's get spiritually nosy and get in other folk business that call themselves children of God so that we can be that light that cannot be hid. Okay? Now, what else did I have? Yeah.
Okay, I heard somebody say sit down. Bertana <laughs> wanted me to remind you of the layman meeting. Uh, layman will be coming in on next, what is it, next week? This Saturday, they'll be coming in, they'll be here in the church at 10 o'clock. Amen? simply says nobody but Jesus. Amen? Amen. How many of you have to depend on him for everything? Amen? Amen. There is nobody but Jesus who can make a way out of no way. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed as the choir minister this song to you. <coughs> Jesus, we worship you.
God be the glory for all the good things he has done for all of us. We count it a joy as well as a privilege to be in the house of God just one more time. I don't know about you, but God is such a good God. And I want to just thank Him for once again permitting us an opportunity to stand before His people and to give our testimony about how good He has been to us and what He's yet able to do for all of us. I want to thank you, our beloved Pastor. Pastor Madison for sharing this preaching desk as we stand and as the under shepherd to ask if we would come today and we just want to say thank you. Now with all of those thank you out of the way, let me go to my assignment from the Father. There is a word today that comes to us from the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Scripture says Fear thy not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10, gives us some words today that we like to look at, and scripture tells us and talk about how to overcome fear. All right. I understand and I know that you know as well that the believers that haven't been given the spirit of fear, but can we just be real today? There's a spirit of fear that runs in our midst. A spirit of fear that we as church members really don't know how to handle. Because well, sometimes we are not even real with ourselves. And the question I will put to us today is simply this. What is it that has caused you to impose a self-imposed holding pattern because of some fear? Why is it that you no longer do what you know God has called you to do because of your fear? Fears are those things that causes us to be paralyzed and not move based upon what people sometimes will say about us. In scripture today, it's very interesting because the children of Israel was in slavery and God had ordained the prophet Isaiah to go and give them a word about not being fearful while they were yet still in slavery. So I would ask the question, the question is simply this, what is it that you are afraid of? Most people will not share that information with you because whether you realize it or not, we build a wall around our hearts and we very rarely permit anybody to come into that sacred ground. 
we will tell people what's on our mind and you can talk all day long about what's in your mind and never tell them what's in your heart. You can lay down beside a lovely young lady or a beautiful man and never that person never knows what's on the inside of your heart. You can be in the midst of those that you call associate but you really call them your friends and they never know what's in your heart because you have learned to keep that sacred on the inside and so therefore they don't know what's in your heart. You can say you know them but you really don't. Uh, you can say you know how they walk and you know everything about them but you only know what they have been able to share with you. So I would ask the question today, what is it that you are afraid of? Let me just put some things before you and then I'll be through before you realize it. Some people are simply afraid of being alone. Yeah. They won't tell you, but if you just watch the action, you can realize that they are afraid of being alone. When they walk in the house, they turn on the television. When they get in their car, they turn on the radio. They have to have people around them all the time because they don't feel comfortable being by themselves. They're even afraid. They'll always try to have people around them. What is it that you are afraid of? Some people are afraid of being alone. There are those that are afraid of growing old. Uh, I'm, I'm, of that, I'm of that mindset. If you live long enough and you keep having birthdays, you're going to grow old. I was re remember reading a little parable that said, the man said that you know he was growing old and he was afraid of it. That man asked him, said, well, why is it you're growing old and feel Intimidated by growing old, do you not have a wife that's about your same age? He said, yes, I do. But she hasn't had a birthday in 50 years. <laughs> so he himself feels as if he's growing old by himself. What is it that, that, that causes you to fear? Some of us feel fear, rejection. We'll never step out on the promises of God because we feel people We'll reject our ideas of what God has instilled in our hearts, so we keep it to ourselves. Some of us fear disappointments. Some of our young ladies feel and fear the idea of not finding the right man to complete them. Can I help you right here? Because I want you to know you don't have to sacrifice yourself. You are complete all by yourself. If God blesses you with a nice young man and a nice young lady, they can only come in and enhance what God has given you. You don't need anybody to complete you. Because if you don't understand the principle of what God is able to do with you, you'll end up finding not a soul mate, but you'll find yourself with a cell mate. And when you have a cell mate, you always try to find a reason why not to come home. You take the long way around because you feel incarcerated with that person that you call your soul mate. But then there are those. I have a granddaughter that this is her eighth week in basic training and she wrote me a letter and said Papa we're going through basic training and there are three phases and the first phase they call them red white and blue and each one of them you have three weeks to complete the phase and in my first phase there's a 40 foot wall that we're also required to jump off of and I'm fearful of jumping. But you say, I understand in order for us to graduate, I have to do it. I wrote her back and told her, you know, God is a good God. God is the same down on the ground as he is 40 feet up a high. I say, you got to not only put your trust and confidence in who you are, but you got to trust in the almighty God. If you go up the wall with him, then when you're on the wall, you can come down knowing that he's with you. So some of us are afraid of taking a leap. 
then there are those of us that are fail or afraid of having bad children. And we find ourselves trying to be their friends. I have to set this ground because many of us to break some walls so we can see that we're all nothing but dressed up dirt. Even though we want to act as if we're better than one another, we are all just dressed up dirt. And if we come to the source of who we are, we can understand that God can work with us if we surrender ourselves unto Him. That's right. Because we all are just simply, uh, uh, we're just simply dressed up. Dirt. But then, how is it? Look over there in Psalms. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Whatever your fears are, I stopped by today just long enough to tell you. It is the enemy that is trying to keep you in bound. He want to keep you where that you won't use what God has still in you. And if you don't yield to him, it's not about you. Sometimes we fail to realize that this battle in which we are fighting is not a physical battle, but it is a spiritual warfare. And if it is indeed a spiritual warfare, you got to have a spirit on the inside of you. And not just any old spirit. You got to have what is called the youth. You said all of this said you used to have to call used to call the Holy Ghost. And there's something about the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm not gonna say that too long because Holy Ghost do more than just make you shout. Uplifting, and we say it is the Holy Spirit that is causing us to do these kinds of things. But let me help you right here. Everybody that is shouting don't necessarily need you to go and faint fan. If you're shouting, they listen to what the words they say. Now, the difference between shouting and praising. Oftentimes, we're conceived in the church that we are. Praising, uh -huh. or we're doing a shouting. Yeah. And if you come to church with a problem, yeah. you come to church that there will be those that know Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you know him, you ought to be able to distinguish uh -huh. between a shout yeah. and a praise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody don't need to be carried out when they're shouting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because you come in limping and you leave church if nobody prayed for you, just crawling out. But if we get a praise in Jesus, I appreciate it, but let me just talk for a minute. If I, if I can just walk with Jesus, because folks are going to church and just going through the motion, you don't have to know who Jesus is anymore. We are spiritual drum major. We'll tell you when to say amen. We'll tell you when to say hallelujah. We'll tell you when to say raise your hand. We'll tell you when to shake your neighbor's hand. We will tell you everything to do except how to get Jesus. I can tell you to reach over and hug your neighbor and tell your neighbor I love you. But they don't mean you love them. If God is on the inside of us, I don't have to tell you to hug your neighbor. You are already the highest. I like to give you direction. When you shout, you'll come down walking straight. But let's go back to my text. What is it that we actually fear? Is it the popularity of the people? Even when we sing. Listen to me now. I'm not here to impress you. 
But I want to help you if I can. Even when we sing, if we're singing praises to God, why is it that if the people don't respond to us, that we feel as if we're not singing? Come on, man. Why is it if we're preaching the word of God yeah. and the word of God is supposed to cut like a two-headed sword, yeah. why is it as preachers we get upset if you don't respond to what we're saying? Well, could it be that when we proclaim the word of God, it's not to get you to respond by shouting, because once you hear the word of God, you are supposed to change your lifestyle. And if you're not willing to change your lifestyle, then maybe you ought to just listen and be convicted by the Holy Spirit. But then he says here, in this, there's about five personal pronouns that Isaiah uses here. He said, For I am with thee. In order for us to be in a position to overcome fear, there are four things in these five personal pronouns that he's using that we have to look at. First of, we have to be able to acknowledge something. What he says, he says, <coughs> For I am with thee. You have to be in a position if you're going to overcome your fears to acknowledge that he's with you. Right. It's very important for us to know who's with us. Because scripture says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But if you don't know who's with you, now I don't want you to be confused. Because people will be with you for a season. People will be with you as long as you're up. But if when you get down, they'll begin to leave you. But there's someone that will be with you through thick and thin. In order for us to overcome the fear that we have in this life, we have to acknowledge who it is that's with us. I don't know who's with you. I, I really can't tell you who's with you. But I can only tell you who's with me. And when he's with you, you can stand in the midst of your enemy and still have love in your heart for him. Church, you don't need a praise team. 
but you got to be sure that he's with you. Then he says, be not dismayed. And what he's telling me is that don't be discouraged. Sometimes we get discouraged. Church is not like it used to be. Yeah. Church is not like it used to be. Thank God for your pastor. Keep him well and healthy as long as you possibly can that God will permit you. But when God blesses you with a true leader, it's like having a good doctor. You never want him to retire because you don't want to go on that journey of looking for a new doctor because your old doctor knew everything there is to know about you. And the new doctor, bless your heart, uh, everything is done by computer. And if you're not computer literate, you're going to be left out of the code. But if you have a good doctor, keep him. And if you have a good pastor, hold him up before a holy God. That God will keep him strong. Because today, we don't have good leaders anymore. Everybody is want to be in it for themselves. But God is still the good shepherd. Even though the under shepherd may not be what he ought to be, God is still the good shepherd. So you don't have an excuse to stay at home when you say the preacher's not doing right. Because your good shepherd is the one that woke you up anyway. It was your good shepherd that walked with you. So he's telling the children of Israel, even though you're in captivity and even though you're in slavery, don't be discouraged. Right. Somebody here today yeah. may be discouraged That's right. That's right. because you can't do like you used to do. Yeah. You can't go like you used to go. That's right. yeah. I remember when I was younger, uh, we bought furniture that was very low. Yeah. And it was very fashionable. Uh, but when we got older, uh, we understood <laughs> that's a reason for low furniture. And when you get older, you need to say hi. So when you get up, it's a struggle. And sometimes you have to watch. And it's not that you don't know what you're doing, but you got to be sure every day is ready to move. You can join the journey. Uh, there's a reason why God permitted us to have children when we're young. Because we can run after them. And we can throw things and we can put the spirit in them. But when we get old, that's when we become grandparents. And if we're grandparents, but they started acting up and they don't want to hear, we can send them all home. child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't be far from. He said to me, it's still in them. But it may be a journey that they'll carry you on. But if you have him by your side, you'll know that the journey will come to a good end. The second thing we must know, we must trust in someone. Scripture simply says that, for I am thy God. We have to put our trust and confidence in God. That's right. In order for us to overcome the fears of this life, yeah. we have to know who it is that we're going to trust. Yeah. We have to know it's not us. That's right. And even though we love the pastor, yeah. he's only limited. Yeah. We have to be sure that we put our trust yeah. and our confidence yeah. in God. Okay. God is the only one that never changes. Season changes. Friends will change. Even the pastor sometimes will change. But God will remain the same all of the time. And if you put your trust and confidence in him, we'll be able to know that all things are possible to him that simply believe. And then he says, in order for us to overcome the fears of this life, 
we not only must put our trust and confidence in him, but we must be in a position to know that we have to receive something. Well, and that something is right there in the scripture. He said, I will strengthen yeah. thee. Yeah. That simply means that you are weak all by yourself. Oh. And because you're weak, he's not expecting you to do things by yourself. That's right. When we get in trouble yeah. is when we try to do it ourselves. Yeah. And what we all time do in the church now, we create our mess. Yeah. And then we want God to come in and clean it up for us. But that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. He said, I will strengthen thee. That simply means that he will give you everything that you need. That you can stand with holy boldness. You can speak with clarity. You can speak with confidence. Because the strength that you're standing on is Jesus Christ. It's not you. And whenever you move self out of the way and give him the glory, you can stand and say, to God, be the glory. So not only must we trust him, we must also receive something from him. And that which we should receive is his strength. Yeah. It says simply this, we can do all things. Dr. Clark used to tell us all the time yeah. that there's nothing after all. Mm -hmm. So that simply means whatever it is that God is calling you to do, whatever the assignment that he's given you to do, he's given you the strength to be able to take through. We have to understand that God is a mighty good God. He doesn't want us to live a defeated life. He wants us to be able to do all things exceedingly well. But we have to receive his strength. And when we receive his strength, that simply means that we can stand in his strength. We can speak in his strength. We can walk in his strength. And when the enemy comes upon us, we can stand and not get upset because we're standing in his strength. Let me give you a little secret that I have learned some time ago. When people talk about you, if you're standing in his strength, you have to understand that it's not them talking about you if you're standing and walking in his strength. Then you got to get this. When folks, see, we look at personality. We get mad at personality. But you got to understand, it's not that person, it's the spirit in that person that is trying to deceive you and trying to destroy you. They're trying to destroy you because you are a representative of him. It's not about you. Oh, if you could ever, if the body could ever get that. It's not about you. It's about who you stand for. So when we speak, who gets the glory? When you say you're going to give a piece of your mind, who gets the glory? When you say, I'll lay my religion down, and let me just help you right here. If you're flexible enough to lay it down, I want to inform you today that you may not have anything. Because you can talk with a price. And what you give your life to him is not about you. It's about him. Then finally, he says this. We have to understand something. What is it that we need to understand? You see, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will help thee. Do you brothers and sisters, I don't think we understand the magnitude of what that simply means to the body of Christ. To know that Christ is available to help us. Every baptized believer, when scripture says, if I confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. When he tells us that we can be saved, that simply means that he's going to give us something. When he was on Calvary, he said he has given up the ghosts. And the ghosts come now to be our comforter, to abide on the inside of every believer. Now, brothers and sisters, whether you realize this or not, if you got the Holy Ghost in you, 
Don't you let the devil fool you. Come on, if you got something on the inside yeah. of you, that is, you know what the Holy Spirit is? Yeah. Uh, I don't think you do. <laughs> because if you knew what the Holy Spirit is, you wouldn't be so defeated. Come on, that that come same on. Spirit yeah. that was available when it said, let us make Amen. Yeah. That same spirit when Jesus was talking to his disciples said, Peace I leave unto you. Not as the world will give unto you, but my peace. When he said, I'm going to give you that peace. Not your peace now, but my peace. Oh, if you knew what's on the inside of you, why is it that we walk so defeated if the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us? The devil is busy. Yes, the church yes. is going through what I call uh, it's kind of like I don't want to be disrespectful. Have you ever seen the Apollo? You know what the Apollo they used to have well that whenever the artist was up on stage Everybody will come down. Church is now getting just like the word. Let me help you here so you can clearly understand. Scripture says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that simply means, in essence, is that if he's lifted up, you shouldn't come to church one way and leave the same way. We are going through the motion of just having a good time. But we are powerless. We don't have any power anymore. We're looking for numbers and dollars, but not so. There's going to be a great falling away. But the church ought to be powerful enough that we can talk to those on the outside. And when they see us, we are mirroring what Jesus looked like and what he wants his church to look like. Our standards should never be lowered just to draw the crowd. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, God is holding us and placed the church at a higher standard. And just because Satan make us feel that we got the emulate the word. We can emulate them, but we can't change them. The church has been designed to change the world, not be like the world. On Monday morning, when you come from a mountaintop experience, the church shouldn't be going to work talking about, I hate to be at work today. There ought to be something different about those that know the law. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, in order for us to overcome the fears, not being able to speak what God has placed on our hearts, 2,000 years ago, my Savior, our Lord, went to Calvary, gave his life, never said, but he was willing to pay the price. And because he paid the price, we should not hold ourselves captive, but we should be in a position to tell the dying world that when you see me, you see Jesus. If I can just get you to see Jesus. Doesn't matter whether or not you remember my name. Because my name is not that important. But if you can see Jesus. Our prayer when we walk out 
yeah. the door in the morning uh -huh. is that when people see us, yeah. they will see Jesus. Yeah. When they hear us, yeah. they will hear Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is looking for us to be free yeah. and not held in captive. Uh -huh. Here he is. How do we overcome yeah. the fear of this life? They're very easy. Give your life to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Commit to him. Yeah. Surrender to his will. Yeah. And know that he's an able God. Yeah. And over 2,000 years ago, when he got up and declared all powers yes. in heaven and earth in his hand, yeah. <coughs> brothers and sisters, that same spirit that quickened him uh -huh. can cause you to speak boldly. Yeah. In the midst of a run dying of dying work. Yeah. That same spirit that woke him up and gave him victory yeah. can cause you to stand and proclaim that to God I live yeah. and for God I'll die. Yeah. Right. How is it? Amen. What is it that causes you to be fearful? Sure. Brothers and sisters, it's not about being popular. It's about being obedient. Something that we don't talk about that much. And I'm closing. Jesus not only left the other day, whether we realize it or not, he's coming back again. And it is coming. He's coming for a church. Without a spot or a wrinkle. He's not talking about St. Paul. He's not talking about New Jerusalem. Come on now. He's not talking about Good Street. Yeah. He's talking about this church. Yeah. We can have membership uh -huh. without relationship. Yeah. He's looking for those that have a relationship yeah. with him. Right. I submit to you today, whatever you do, don't let the devil steal your joy. He's an able God. If you have to worship him all by yourself, give him the praise. If you have to stand by yourself, and when I mean by yourself, I mean without any other person with you. Because you're never alone when you got Jesus on your side. He's a good guy. Well, my granddaughter said the other day, Papa, we're supposed to be moving to phase two. But they realized that we just wasn't ready. And because we wasn't ready, the captain said, we're going to hold you an extra two weeks. Just think about it. Brother Pastor, if we would love people, and when we bring a man, we will teach them what Jesus is all about. And when we teach them, we will want to be sure that they understood that it's not about them. But it's about him. And then if for some reason they get ready to move to the next phase, and if they're not ready, they'll take your leadership ability to say you're not ready yet. Because when you step out, you're not only mirroring St. Mark, but you're a mirror in Jesus. Yeah. And we want to be sure that when you stand before this dying, meaning world, you can stand and say, to God I live, and for God I die. He's the name of God, and he can change whatever it is that you're going through. And you got to have an I know testimony. Not a testimony you came up with, but an I know testimony. You may not know the Bible through and through, but you can say, I know what he can do for you. Just like the brown man. I don't know who he is, but I do know what this one thing. I was blind, but then I can say, nobody but Jesus. I don't know how slow he has been, but you ought to be able to have a testimony to tell this dying world. I was found out. Nobody but Jesus.
good. I think I know your pastor well enough to tell you that these chairs here is not for relationship, they're for membership. And you seat right where you are. You can give your life to Jesus. Whatever it is that I'm called you to be in body. Scripture says, if I confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, that simply means you got to be willing to tell folks you know Jesus. You can't come to him and not acknowledge him. Then you got to believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Paul said over there in Romans 10, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God is that Israel might be saved from prayer and record. They have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. I want you to be able to step out of this word, not by a zeal, but by knowledge, knowing that God is able to do all things exceedingly well. So if you're not interested in and have not accepted Christ, right in where you are, you can give your life to him. And once you give your life to him, you're going to need a church home. That's what these churls are here for. The chair of the assembly means that we are open and willing to teach and train you in the way that Jesus wants you to go. You don't sit in the chair to give your life to Christ. You give your life to Christ back then. And once you give your life to Christ, you say, well, preaching is a long way down the aisle. That's the secret now. Because if you give your life to him in your seat, he'll get up with you. And not only will he get up with you, He'll walk down the aisle with you. And he'll be able to give you the strength to know all this well. Give your life to him. Today is a good day. But say, here am I. Take me and you. A lot of things I don't understand. But I know that I need you in my life. So I'm going to surrender to you. That you might become Lord and Savior of my life. Make that commitment, we pray God's blessings upon you. And then we encourage you to give your life to Him and find a church home. If you already have been a member of a church, uh, they teach you that you ought to leave by way of letter. Because we don't want you on a whole lot of folks' church roll. And since you're still alive, your name will still be on somebody else's church roll. But I just believe in my heart, if you don't have a letter today, the church will see to it that you get a letter. So we want to let you know, if you don't know him, give your life to him. And if you're a Christian and you don't have a church home, no Christian should be without a home. Today is a good day to give your life to him and a good day to have a church home. And this is a mighty good church to call home. If you and I miss today, as the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, would you obey the Spirit and simply come? Thank you.
brother. Everybody, real quickly before they come. Let's bless the man of God. Just get it out now, hold it up. He'll be right there. Whatever you give. Just raise your hands up there, come right up. Let us bless the man of God.
same night as Jesus was betrayed. He took bread and he blessed it. Thank you. 